Guys, welcome back to another episode of Going Deep with Brit English with Chili from Chili Treasures. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming down. Three different cards. So pick a card, ask me a question, and we'll see how we go. Okay. I suppose we'll go level one. Absolutely. All right. What do you think is the hardest part of what I do for a living? Mm. Ooh. Okay, so I'm looking at the spiritual stuff in the workshops. Mm hmm I think the hardest part of getting into that, your first workshop would be maybe imposter syndrome mm -hmm. and um, holding the energy and holding the space of everybody there and catering, catering to all of their needs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Am I right or wrong or am I close? Tick on the first one. Yeah. The second one is something that I've always found to be quite easy. Okay. Holding space for others and seeing their needs and mm. perceiving, yeah, ob observing their little quirks and yeah. how to read a person going mm. you know there's a there's a crowd of of beings and yeah. there's that one person who's a bit uncomfortable or maybe they were trying to speak up and they got shut down as you do in a group setting and I'll be like mm. so what, what were you saying mm. you know so I'm, I'm quite good at, at reading Very that attentive. but the imposter syndrome of yeah am I am I even good enough to be standing here and leading a workshop for others. Mm. But I, I got over that quite quickly from the response that I Beautiful. received afterwards, yeah. Amazing. Mm. All right, we're level two. All right. I'll ask you this question, here we go. Ooh. What's been the best compliment a stranger has given you? Ooh, best compliment. Probably one based off of my energy. Mm. Yeah. Energy based compliments. Nice. Yeah, energy based compliments. Yeah, and how I've affected them in such a short period of mm. interaction. Okay. We'll leave number three for later on. Okay. Now, I've got a question for you. How did, this, how did it start for you getting into the spiritual community and getting into the spiritual work? Ooh. Um, I mean, when I was young, I would just collect crystals and. So, let, let me start with this. Yeah. Mom's a Virgo, right? Okay. So I would, would go to the park or on a day adventure and I would come back with like this super special leaf that I would remember that day from mm. this leaf and all these rocks and crystals and I would put them in my bedside and all oh, sorts. Wow. So now mum is OCD, likes everything clean and mm. then there's this, this little gremlin child who just <laughs> wants to be in nature and bring nature into the bedroom. And, yeah. Yeah, so I've always had it. And then mm. you obviously go through high school um, and you kind of lose touch of those things from childhood and then they resurface. And it began, I want to say, oh gosh, when did I go to Europe? I went to, to Europe on a girl's trip mm. and we were all quite spiritual and yeah. you know delving into it We'd go to crystal stores mm. over there but I came back and I was very sick and that was the beginning I wow. want to say that that was like a rebirth for me where I had really bad gut issues and it led to me not even wanting to go out because I would be so painfully bloated. Mm. Um, so rethinking my eating habits, um, what I'm consuming, what I'm doing, what makes me happy. Yeah. And starting from the lowest low that I've had of my health, which yeah. isn't even that low comparatively, but um, it woke me. It woke me up to a lot wow. of things. Yeah. So was it really, you were very sick in Europe, like to the point where you were like bedridden or having... Um, not quite bedridden, uh, but I, I was just blindly consuming, mm. you know. Um, funnily, I was like, you know, I'm going to make my own breakfast. Uh, mm. We were in Greece and I'd go and get these beautiful tomatoes and nice. the sea salt and these rusks. And then next thing all the girls would wake up and it's like oh we found this super cute restaurant to go to mm. and then i'd have a bit of fomo and i'm like well when am i ever going to be here again True. so i'd have two breakfasts and then mm. at that point i was drinking i i don't drink anymore and i haven't for a yeah. very long time so good, yeah good consuming you know spirits and mm. being around that energy and barely sleeping it was just my poor body yeah, yeah, fair enough. 
So was it the health kick that really got you into spirituality, seeing how the food affects you and how you can go around it? Yeah, I would yeah. say so. I'd say that was that was the beginning of it um, mm. because I I had to do a lot of research, and then in the research you you realise the system that's there, and then you realise well if you're not taking care of yourself mm. on all aspects, everything crumbles. And if you're if you're not in your center and mm. in alignment, then you're going to go down these wayward paths of bad decisions, which we need to do ultimately to bring us back mm. and to realize who we really are. True. Mm. Amazing. And what's important. And um, tell us about, I know that you do channel sometimes, guided meditations and methods yeah. and things like that. How did that process work for you and when did it first start? Oh, um, it started before I knew. As I look back in reflection, I was always friends with the younger years, the years above me. Mm. And a lot of people who I didn't really know that well would just come and just offload and, oh, wow. and dump. And they, they felt comfortable enough to do so with me. And I would just know the right thing to say. Wow. Um, and at the time, I, I didn't trust it. I was like, I don't know what I'm saying. Am I even It's just kind of coming them? out automatically. Yeah, and and some stuff I would, I would say and I'd be like, why did that why did mm. that channel through didn't use those words back then true and the more that i lean into and trust it i've you know i've said stuff or uh, reached out at certain times for people mm. and it's yeah it's been divine wow mm. that's beautiful yeah i love that actually um do you know much about the power of colors and you using them and what they mean in your life um i wouldn't say i'm an expert uh, yeah. But I do, I mean, I, I did a bit of interior design, so yeah. colour theory and... Mm, were there feng shui in there as well? I didn't touch on feng shui. I know yeah. a few things yeah. from just picking up here and there, but that mm. is something that I want to look into more, yeah. definitely. Fair enough, yeah. And what does the purple mean to you? The purple... I feel like there's a deep meaning behind this. I'm, I'm sure there is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, so actually, I first went pink. And I went really bright pink because mm. it was my least favorite color. Okay. So in school, I was always a tomboy. Um, I associated pink with weakness. And to throw myself in the deep end, I okay. was like, okay, let me wear my least favorite color on my, on my hair. <laughs> I can't get rid of yeah, it. Yeah. It's there. I've got to just learn to accept and acknowledge and realize why I think it is a weakness. How um, old were you when you did this? This was probably, was it three years ago, I think? It's a yeah. big step to do, like something that you hate and just putting it on. And I'd never hair. done anything with my hair before. Like mum mm. still trims my hair. I would, wow. wouldn't really frequent the hairdresser. Like my mane is, you know, this holds a mm. lot of energy and stories and all of that. So to, yeah, it was, it was quite massive actually. And it was really, it was a shock. Mm. It was a shock to the system, but I would say that was probably my first step to really tapping into my feminine. Wow. Mm. That's really cool. I've never heard of that story before, but um, <laughs> I can see it would be very empowering for you to like flip the script a bit and say, I'm starting again, starting anew. Yeah. Like embracing it. And um, you're a vegan? Yes, I am. How, how has veganism affected your, your health and also your spiritual health? Oh, wow. Where do I begin? I, so I started pescatarian. And then eventually transitioned mm. to vego. And then I was vegan before I knew I was vegan. So being Greek, feta, I, I mm. would consume it with almost every meal. And there was a, a period of time where, I don't, I don't know why I kind of stopped or drew back. And I was like, I can't remember the last time that I ate feta. And that was the last animal product mm. that I had eaten. And I was like, well, I'll just continue not eating it because if I haven't, for this long, then I clearly, yeah. I don't need, need it, you know, it's a want. And I found a really good vegan feta, but it's like $18 a jar. <laughs> I mean, it could be worth it though, you know? Oh, it is, it's 100% worth yeah. it. I will buy that jar. I will learn how to make it actually. That's what I'm gonna do mm. eventually when I find the time. <laughs> um, but my health, just veganism and fasting skyrocketed my healing. Um, and not just my healing, but 
for me to actually thrive. Yeah. Uh, clarity. Do you, know, do you notice a big difference because you do things like meditation and channeling that actually affected your ability to serve others in your workshops and your clarity of your channeling and I would say so. Yeah. I would say, I, I mean, there's, there's an air of lightness that I get from, from fasting and it reminds me that I don't need to consume as much as, as we do. Mm. And I, I can't explain the feeling of, of lightness. It's, mm. it's almost it's very light. It's, I know <laughs> it's, it's, it's light. Yeah. It's, um, you have the ability for energy to flow through mm. much more easily. You don't feel stagnant. You can, it's, it's floaty. Like you can, you can jump from this idea to that or mm. it, like anything can happen to you and you just allow it to happen. Beautiful. Like you become more ether. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. Um, mm. Are you into Ayur Ayurvedic or astrology? Ayurveda or astrology, sorry? Both. Yes. Yeah. What's your sign? I'm an Aries, but if we're doing okay. sidereal, then I'd be a Pisces. Mm. But yeah, Aries. So Pisces is water, I'm guessing? Yes. Aries is fire. Mm -hmm. mm. And in Ayurveda, are you like Vata Pitta, air, fire? Or? Um, gosh, I haven't tested that in a while, to be honest with you. I'm very go, go, go. So definitely Pitta in there, for sure. Mm. So the fire is strong. Fire is strong. What do you feel like you are when it comes to sidereal or general? Because well, you've got Pisces and Aries are two different sort of are, signs. What do you feel like you mm, are? That's a tough one because I do feel very Pisces at times with the, the creative and flowy side mm. and very, um, very easygoing. And yeah. also Pisces are known for their fairy energy. Mm. And um, you, have, you have elemental energy going on. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Depends on the day. True. Mm. I feel like we're, we're a bit of all of the signs, to be honest. We, we certainly are, yeah. yeah. Let me just put up my questions here, sorry, because I had a few I need to work with. Your last workshop, was that the Coming Home to Self or the Inner Child one? Uh, last workshop was Coming Home to Self. Coming Home to Self. Yeah. And what did you base that around and what did that really mean by Coming Home to Self? Ooh. So last year I, I had a massive internal realisation that I was... I wasn't there for myself. Mm. Um, I, I wouldn't check in. I was just kind of on this perpetual train of doing. And I was in service, but I wasn't because I wasn't coming from a place of fullness. So mm. what I was giving out was very minimal and it wasn't of substance and I want to bring substance to the world and I can't do that if I don't fill up my cup because mm. I'm, I'm, I, I explained it. I wasn't pouring from an empty cup. I had smashed the cup and I was giving out the shards. Oh, really? That was the, that was the point that I got to. And How did that feel? <sighs> hollow, mm. really hollow. And hollow, that's a good one. Just really sad that I, I wasn't there for myself. Mm. And... I didn't realize because it's so easy for us to get caught up in life and, and happenings that we don't take step backs often enough yeah. to, to reflect at where we are and what decisions we're making and why are we making those decisions. So I, I, I went off social media for a bit um, because I was definitely in that people pleasing tendency of, I can't say no. So it's yes. Oh, okay. Of course I'll do that. Yeah. And it's not even just saying yes, just offering like someone would be like, Oh, you know, like I'm thinking of da da da. And I'm like, I'll help you. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on a second. A, if they needed my help, they would ask. Mm. So I'm offering it and it's probably going to end up going nowhere because they didn't ask for the help. True. And then I would feel resentful because they're not appreciating the help that they didn't ask for. Yeah. So it's just this this circle of mm. not really great habits. Yeah, it's almost like you're looking to help everyone else before helping yourself. Exactly. exactly and then it's like, what are you avoiding? Mm. What do you think that stems from, that people pleasing tendency to overdo and overhelp and things of that nature? Because I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I do, this, I do very similar things. I mean, I... I don't know where it roots down to like the, you know, the seed of it, but I, I've always been 
like Switzerland in family situations. I've always been the one that... So Switzerland than like me, medium mediator? Ground. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a whole other podcast, that oh, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, um, I, from a very young age, would just always be in service. Mm. Um, and maybe it was a bit of a hero complex as well. Mm. Kind yeah, of, yeah. yeah, because I've always felt really grounded within myself. Like, whatever happens to me, I know I'm fine. Mm. So I've, I'm almost like, yeah, I'm going to be good. So I don't need to focus on me, which I do. Mm. But I had kind of twisted my own perception. And then in that, it was, okay, well, if I'm good, then let me look externally. And how can I help everyone else? Mm. Because people were coming to me with issues. So it was just, I got into a pattern of give, give, give. And it wasn't, no, nothing was filling up my cup. True. So you feel like, um, oh, I always feel like when people are coming to you with problems and you're giving them solutions, automatically, you obviously have, you're a healer by nature. Mm -hmm. And people can just feel that on an energetic level. Yeah. They can't really explain. Um, so have you had any experiences with yourself doing healing work, either distance healing or in-person healing and things of that nature, or is it more just conversational? Um, it's more conversational for me. I, I mean, I really wanted to study Reiki. Um, mm. I haven't got around to that yet. I'm doing Reiki in August, actually. Oh, that's so <laughs> yeah. exciting. Who are it you is. doing it with? There's a master Reiki guy. He's like 80 years old. He lives down in Augusta oh, or wow. Margaret River. And um, I want to go see him because he's getting older now to, to make sure I, yeah. Yeah. That would yeah. be beautiful. Make mm. a little trip of it. Yeah. Mm. Got to make the most of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, mainly conversations and I suppose... I've come to realize, I mean, I, I was told the other day that I, um, I heavily trigger people. Oh, really? Yeah. In a good way or a bad way? Um, or both? I would say triggers are a brilliant thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Triggers are um, the opportunity for us to lean in and heal things or learn more about ourselves and mm. have more compassion. So, um, yeah, apparently I... I trigger certain people just in in my fullness and expression of who I am, and I, I suppose that's Aries attributes of yeah. I've always been very confident in myself, and yeah, just the way that that I go out and express. And mm. in recent years, I've I used to be quite serious, and I've I've kind of switched that, and I've gone to more joy and play and yeah, that Pisces that. Mm. fairy energy. And I think just m me bringing my energy to whatever space it is also shifts and, and heals mm. because I, I show other beings that it's okay to be that because yeah. we're in a world where we have to be serious and strict and to routines. And mm. so I'm like a reminder that you don't have to. There's joy mm. in every moment. And that triggers people. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if it's that or I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. Well, I think we all trigger people, to be honest. And maybe yes. you're like, that's your elemental sort of vibe mm. is trigger you, but that's their problem. So yeah. Get on with it. <laughs> 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 okay, here we go. Now, um, people talk a lot about the divine feminine and divine masculine. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Like, a, what does a divine feminine embodiment look and feel like? <sighs> Not needing to explain City why questions. you are who <laughs> yeah. you are. Mm. Um, I think divinity speaks for itself. Mm. And an inner knowing of who you are, what your boundaries are, respecting them, speaking your truth. I mean, if we, if we simplify it, it's just unlocking the chakras, mm. you know? You, you're grounded and rooted and safe, no matter what's going on externally, no matter who's around you, what situation you're in, you know you're safe mm. because you've got you. True. And then you can tap into that sexual and creative energy mm. and you're free flowing and, and you bring it into absolutely everything that you do, you, you fully embody it. and. The I am and listening to your intuition 
mm. trusting that that inner voice that we've been told our whole lives not to listen to and loving mm. and loving your enemies loving those that oppose you or are trying to or who are uh what's the word i'm looking for who who wish ill mm. upon you because they don't really because yeah. they're coming from a wounded place um to speak your truth without fear of rejection or mm. people lashing out at you because you're speaking from a place of love so it doesn't matter what you're saying it matters the intention behind it mm. and then to see further than than yourself and to have a inner knowing of energies around you and being safe in that energy and knowing that you are that energy and then to realize that we're not the 3D there's so much more to this this vessel that we're in but also knowing that we came here to be in that vessel so it's it's embodying all of that and loving yourself for all your darkness that to wow. me is me being in my divine feminine mm. That was a beautiful answer actually. Thank you. <laughs> very very nice. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I want to try and experiment this with channeling. Mhm. Mm I'm going to ask you a question. Um, we're going to close our eyes. Okay. Here's here we go. So what you're doing is you're channeling your future self. You can see her standing in front of you. And she's showing you all the love you're going to receive and the life you're going to create and live. She tells you a secret about love and magic. What is that secret? It's real. It's accessible in every single moment. We always have a choice. like the the scales of time we can either lean into and subscribe to the idea of fear and discomfort and old patterns whether they're ones that we've picked up from family trauma or situations that have happened to us or we can lean into a new ideal a new story which will feel uncomfortable at first because it's new and you'll want to resist it but having a a trust in in love and knowing that love is the answer above all and if you live in that energy everything everything that is divine will come to you you don't you don't even have to put in much effort or energy and that's that's the funny thing is we've been told to fear and and to avoid certain things and situations but those are the very things that set us free so to release yourself to unclip your wings to open that cage just love and mm. and love wholeheartedly beautiful mm. that was that worked beautifully <laughs> forgot wow. where I was for a second <laughs> <laughs> and um when it comes to plants and crystals and you're mm -hmm. picking up different leaves and things of that nature Mm -hmm. Are there any plants or crystals that are out to you that you've worked with that you sort of connected mm. with? I love selenite. Mm. Um labradorite is one of my all-time favorites. Whenever I do a a reading, I will I will have one of those with me. Um mm. is, is this selenite here? This brick? Yes, and that that is lab sitting labradorite. on top of it too. How yeah. amazing is that? <laughs> <laughs> like those two together um are just yeah like it strip away all the other crystals i mean i years ago went mad for crystals um mm. and then funny funny enough recently i've been coming to the realization that i was just chasing all these external things in these objects that i have within myself mm. i can tap into the energy of any crystal at any time because I am that crystal. That crystal is me. Beautiful. Um so it's more so just appreciating the energy and and using it as a touchstone. 
mm. to remember what what it is that I want to bring. So say I'm struggling through something and I want to bring in love, I'll have a rose quartz in my pocket. Mm. And every time I put my hand in my pocket, I go, oh, yeah, deepen into love. Well, yeah. Like a little gentle reminder. Yeah. I love that. Mm. Um, I had a question for you that was quite profound, but I lost it in my mind. Um, oh, yeah, coming back to love and deeper states of love being magic, what do you think love really is and how do we access and embody more of it? Ooh, what is love? <laughs> wow. Acceptance. Mm. Um, compassion. Compassion is a massive one mm. uh, because with, I mean, I, I, I would probably just blanket it with compassion because to accept someone you have to have compassion to see their, their side of the story. Mm. To be patient with someone you have to have compassion for they may not be where you are. Um, yeah, I, I would say love is to be compassionate. And, and don't forget to be compassionate for yourself because mm. if you, I mean, nobody acts nastily from a, a place of love. So True. if you love yourself and you're compassionate and you're slow with yourself, then you will just be pouring out that energy to the rest of the world. Mm. Mm. Wow. And I'm going to tap into something. Um, with past life, have you had much work around past lives? Have you had dreams or visions or things that have sort of come up or that's not your I've had a bit. Um, yeah. Not so much dreams. I'm still working on the dreams because I have mm. very crazy vivid dreams. Oh, do you? Um, it's just... What kind of dreams are you talking about? <sighs> out of this world. <laughs> mm. um, there's, there's always messages within there, but it's me write, like needing to write them down in the morning mm. and then unpack them and, and the more that I write them down the more the dreams come and so that memory muscle being practiced yeah yeah, yeah. Um, do you believe mm. that dreams are actually a natural projection of another life we're living and we're just getting glimpses of those little snippets of that or it's actually like a simulated thing by our subconscious mm. for our personal growth or both oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah I would say both yeah. um, and both are there to supply you messages for mm. what you need. So say you need a specific message for this timeline that you're in, then it'll be this crazy wacky dream. Mm. Or if the timeline that you're in and the situation that you're in is directly linked to a past life, which is actually presently occurring, um, then that past life will come through and maybe it's a message from yourself to yourself mm. in that past life of hey like I'm going through the exact same thing maybe let's change things up and yeah. you know make a different decision or yeah wow. I think it's both have you ever experienced a memory come to you or a, 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 um, become aware of a cycle that's happening and and changed it through your spiritual work yes yeah yes um, anything you could share or is it how do I word this um, it was more so a, a comment in passing that then shifted things internally for me, but I was only able to shift them because I was ready. Mm. Um, and that was me just constantly jumping from partner to partner and pouring all of myself into this other being. Mm. Like just filling their cup and giving them all the glass. Yeah, and yeah. In, in hopes of me feeling fulfilled. Mm. And I never quite got to the, the crux of it um, because there, there's wounding there with the father figure yeah. or lack thereof. He was there, but um, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the other podcast because yeah, yeah, that's a enough. long story. But I, I don't know if it was... Because I'm, I'm this confident person, so I was like, mm. is it I'm wanting acceptance? Or I, I could mm. never quite get to it, but I just, I stopped, I stopped digging. Yeah. Because sometimes we don't need the mm. answer, we just need the shift. So exactly. I was like, yes. I'm looking for something externally and I'm not getting it mm. because only I can give it to myself. And that was what I needed. And it would, I, I just, um, it was explained to me, it's like, you're on this merry-go-round. 
you just, you know, you hop off, you hop back on, you hop off, but it's the same merry-go-round, the same lesson, and and yeah. clearly nothing's coming from it. Mm. So I I decided to abstain, and I in September I'll be one year celibate. Wow. Um, just focusing on my energy mm. and learning and learning in the most random situations and ways I'll be driving to work and a thought will pop in or I'll be doing a task or hanging out with friends and I'll be like oh wow like that's why I do that or that makes sense or no I don't like that or witnessing other people uh, sorry other beings even I keep slipping up (laughs) and and seeing the way that they're interacting and going that's not something that I think I would appreciate or Mm. so I'm I'm relearning my boundaries in my space and my energy before I bring someone else in wow that's amazing how are you feeling in that process of celibacy oh my gosh incredible yeah so like I can't tell you the amount of times especially in the past couple of months that I've told Mm. girlfriends and friends I am so happy with the space that I'm in right now Mm. I feel so empowered because I'm actually choosing me, I'm putting myself first. Mm. I am learning and assessing and just like storing all of this knowledge. Yeah. And then I'm also enacting it in, you know, relationships with other beings and mm. con- conversations and yeah, it's it's super empowering. Wow. Mm. That's beautiful, hey. Did you have any of these channeling experiences in childhood? Or did you have any spiritual experiences that were kind of profound or shaping you in any kind of way? Or was it more of a gentle I think it was more of a gentle progression. But mm. I mean, a, a lot of my childhood was kind of stored in a box. Um, despite all that had happened to me and around me, I, I always, you know, I was like, I have an amazing childhood. But I also went through a lot of stuff. So yeah. kind of that safety mechanism in your mind that kind of goes, let's just keep those years over here and we won't really remember, it's a bit fuzzy. Mm. So, I mean, I could have had a profound experience and it not be at the forefront of my mind. Um, Yeah. Yeah, but no, just always a deep inner knowing that I'm fine. Mm. Mm. Where do you think that deep inner knowing comes from? Or is that the core of your being? It's probably the core of, yeah, like the, this, this, the experiences that myself and my family have gone through have been mm. quite intense and traumatizing. And the whole way through, I just kept saying to mom, we're going to be fine. I don't know why, I don't know where, I just know. Mm. And I mean, we, we came out the other end and, and we were more than fine. So. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was just spirit cementing that, that seed and going, just trust. Mm, beautiful. Because I had a dream about you before I actually met you. Oh, really? I hadn't even seen a photo of you, nothing. I just remember, I just remember when I saw you at Aesthetica, I'm like, holy crap. Like, I didn't know who was who, because there's so many people at Aesthetica. I remember going home and saying, I saw the girl from my dream in Aesthetica, but I don't know who she is. Yeah. Which is interesting, but... How the dream went on, I was just appearing in this white room, just everything was white, infinite vastness, and you were there talking to me, telling me a message, but your hair was all purple like it is now, but all of it was purple and it was glowing like an aura. Mm. And then um, you had a, a man in a military uniform standing behind you. Wow. Yeah. As if he was like a protector or, or something like that. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So, I don't know what that means, but anyway. Who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> But maybe because it's past, future, present, it's all one. So, yeah. you know, who knows? Because I often think that sometimes our dreams um, are actual traveling. And when we actual travel, time does not exist or it is different compared yeah. to what it is now. And it's just all, all of... You're in the quantum field and mm. absolutely anything is possible. All right, I've got one more channeling experience for you to do. Mm-hmm. Now, it's funny you mentioned a box. Because when I was on the floor, <laughs> I was talking about a box. Mm-hmm. That was buried. Okay. I don't know if I want to open that box in this podcast. If it's, but or there's one in a white room. So what would you prefer? Mm. The magical box or the white room? I think the white room. White room. Yeah, because okay. you just said white room earlier. Exactly. Yeah. Here we go. 
So we're going to close down the eyes. Mm -hmm. Taking a few deep breaths. Now you're deep in a meditation and you see a purple vortex appear before you. You become this vortex, which is filled with love and limitless energy. You get pulled up into infinite space and enter a white room, fully light and etheric, an infinite space. You hear a gentle voice filled with love telling you the meaning of life. What is the meaning that that voice tells you? Experience it all mm. fully. There is no such thing as a bad emotion. There is no such thing as something terrible happening to you. It is all just the experience of it. You are not attached to this body. You are here to experience it. Our natural state is supposed to be ease and joy and we've been conditioned otherwise. Nature, massive, massive call to be in nature. That's where all the answers lie, where we can learn how to interact with other beings, why things happen the way that they do. We learn about death. Death, well, that's a massive one. Mm. That's one that we should not fear. We are born to die, and yet we spend our whole lives trying to avoid it. Anti-aging creams, this diet, all of these random, random things that we must do in our day or eat or speak about exercises to tighten the muscles so that we don't look like we're aging, but the wrinkles and the gray hairs are signs that you've lived and you've experienced. And what is the point of being born into this planet and into the very body that you reside in to not experience it all? Whether People look at you as if you're crazy or weird or different, but if it feels right for you and if it's from a place of love, run head on into those experiences. Make those choices and decisions for yourself and just live fully, like the full expression. If you are angry, be angry. If you are upset, cry, scream, laugh, run. You know, you know that feeling when you're just sprinting and you feel the wind on your hair and you're breathing so deeply. That, that is the feeling of being alive. And bring that into absolutely everything that you do. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this too. <laughs> yeah, because I always find that um, when you ask yourself a question in a deep and state of meditation within yourself, the answer is always more pure and better and depending on mm. your channel and gifts, anything can come through. Oh, this juice is incredible. <laughs> it is. This it? is life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's high vibrations right there. Um, I'm probably going to do the one more of the channeling ones because I will change it up. Mm -hmm. to a heart one, but if there's a few more questions I want to ask you. Um, for some reason, I have a call to ask you about animals and their meanings mm -hmm. and spirit animals. Do you have okay. much experience with these things? Um, a little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. I, um, I've been told that my granddad comes to me as willy wagtails mm -hmm. and as ibises. Um, now... Is the ibis, the Egyptian? And my brother bought one when he went down south, like a little teddy of an ibis, and I was in his car the other day, and I'm like, oh, what? So they, they come to me mm. in the most random situations. So the ibis is there to remind you that you can soar high. Mm. 
mm. and feel free, but you also have the ability to go really deep within your waters and to feel all those emotions. Wow. So you have the capacity for both. And so many people don't realize that they have the capacity mm. to feel. They think that their capacity is limited to all these low vibrational emotions, mm. but we each have the capacity for the full experience. And the mm. willy wagtail comes as a reminder for joy and playfulness and, and confidence and, you know, mm. ruffling your feathers and dancing and not caring yeah, who's yeah. watching. Um, so those two have come, come up for me. And mm. funny enough, there was a situation um, where I was asking the universe for a sign. And I was like, do I continue opening up my heart to this situation? If so, please show me an octopus. I don't know why I chose octopus. <laughs> I need to look into that. Um, <laughs> and then if, if I should stop pouring my energy into this situation, show me an eagle soaring right above my head. Like, whew. not an eagle. A hawk, sorry. Okay. Yes. So, hawk and an octopus. Mm. Very random. And I had asked the universe, and it was probably a week after that, I, I got home and I was journaling, and I, I put it in my journal and I said, okay, I release this because it's been playing on my mind and the universe isn't going to give me the answers mm. when I want it. They're going to give it to me when I need it. So, released it and then... I, my, my dinner arrived and I was like, I put on a random video. So I put this cottage tour video. Mm. Yeah. So she's going through the cottage tour and she's showing the fireplace. And typically, right, you have a photo like about there, above mm. the fireplace. This photo was like almost to the ceiling. It was the most random placement mm. and yet, the lady decided to still video it and put it in the tour. So she's like, oh, you know, there's a fireplace and there's this painting of an octopus. Oh, wow. And it was exactly as I envisioned it in my mind. And I was like, okay, all right, yep, cool, 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 cool. Um, and then further down the line, a couple of months, I was at the beach and a hawk flew overhead. And I was like, right, it's time for me to draw my energy back into wow. myself. And that was about the time that I came home to self. That, mm. that was where that workshop was birthed because I was like, yeah, okay, we've learned the lessons that we've needed, but now I need to, I need to strip everything away mm. and it's me. That's yeah. amazing. I feel like you answered your own question with the symbols of the animals because an octopus is like sucking and consuming almost, yes. you know, but a, a falcon or a hawk is flying high and free. So you would your intuition was telling you that mm. letting go is flying free, but staying with him is like being yeah. sucked or caught. And, or and then you've got the, the ink of the octopus, so you're blinded mm. by what's around you. Because, I mean, when you're, when you're in a fight or flight and you're not in a safe area mm. or something is not for you, then you kind of go, Psh, and there's that ink. And then you, you don't know where you're going, mm. what you're doing. You don't know where you are and where your tentacles are going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. <laughs> it, does, it makes perfect sense, yeah. I'm glad I asked that question. All righty. Hmm. Good questions here. Have you had much experience with um, manifestation? Oof. Like in half an hour? <laughs> like things will just... But I... So I've had a lot... I've experienced with manifestation and I'm very good at manifesting, mm. but I don't need to manifest. I've, I've gotten to that stage of whatever is meant for me, whatever will happen will happen. And I just, I go with it. Like I'll manifest little things, you know, but yeah, I got to a point where I'm like, I don't, I don't need to manifest because that's, it, it becomes boring almost. Like mm. I want this and then it's there. What, what are some examples that you've, you've manifested or circumstances, experiences oh. or items? Certain situations falling into place. Um, I, there's never really been like massive things because I, I don't really want for anything, you know? Mm. 
Good place to be, place yeah. of not wanting. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, not, not really anything big. Mm. Just, just little, little occurrences things. or, or I'll think about someone that I haven't seen in a really long time and then they'll message. Mm. Um, you think that's you calling upon them? Probably. And like warping the universe to your own will? Probably. Mm. I like the sound of that. Yeah. That's very, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a couple of things because like, when I think about manifestation, I think of, okay, the divine will is what created all of, all the world and reality around us. And we are, we have the power of the divine will within us as well because we're all just mm. one thing. So when it comes to manifestation, is it within our, obviously it's in our ability to manifest, but you were saying, I don't want to manifest it. We'll just, what's meant for me will find me. Yeah. But will someone else decide what's to find you or will your vibration decide or how do you draw the line between, mm. you know what, I have this vision, I want to attain that vision or I just want to let go of the wheel. Mm. Do you have phases where you flick back and forth or do you just want yeah, to sort of let go of like... Yeah, mm. um, It depends. I mean, most of the time it's kind of like just the flow of whatever mm. will happen. But if I say a really cool idea is birthed mm. or I get, I get a message of strongly of you, you need to go down that path or this, or mm. then I'll kind of be like, okay, like I really, I don't even say I, I hope or I wish it's, it's, I am already. I am. Yeah. Beautiful. So if, if I want something to be, I am that already. Mm. And then it, it'll just, Beautiful. So you get like a calling, like a vision, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to put my will into action and bring it in. Yeah. And I'll, mm. I'll catch myself, um, say, I'll like slip into an old pattern and I'll catch myself in it. And instead of going, oh, come on, that's mm. where that compassion comes in. And I go, it's okay, mm. because we're going to slip up sometimes, but you've caught yourself. And we're, we're not subscribing to that pattern. So mm. what, what do we want to be? And then I'll have the affirmation of I am that mm. and I will just be that. And, and me being that, well, okay, so if I want to be that, what type of actions do I take? What type of, you know, hobbies have, have I got? What mm. things do I do in my day? What are my habits? And then I, just slowly incorporate mm. that. Wow. Mm. It's a very structured process. I love it. It's structured, but it's so not structured. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm very, I'm, combining. I'm a walking juxtaposition. Yeah, I, mm. my calendar is like to the T, but if I randomly feel like doing something, I'm just gonna go and do it, or I'm True. very flowy, yeah. That's cool. So you've got like both options available to you all the time. Yeah, I like to have options, yes. Yeah, okay, I love mm -hmm. that. Mm. This keeps happening where I have a question and then like I get lost in the, in the answer and I'm like, damn it, the, the next question's gone. Um, so I guess we're just flowing, hey? Um, things like shadow work. Mm -hmm. so you know, before, before the shadow work, I, my mm -hmm. last question came back, okay. We're gonna do one more channeling experiment. Okay. This one's based on the heart. So we're gonna close down the eyes and we're gonna allow our heart to open and we're going to enter the space within our heart, within ourselves. And in this space is a beautiful garden of lush green grass, greenery, and there's this big, beautiful door. And within this door, we open it up to the seat of our soul. And there's this box, this big chest, beautiful magic box. When we open the box, we're going to find the gift we've always wanted, but never felt we truly could have or deserve or hold. What is in this box waiting for us, or you, or everyone. See, there was a part of me that was like, hmm? Um, water. Water. There's water. And this kind of links into a meditation that I'm uh, doing for this weekend's workshop. Mm. And the water, I mean, we're 80% we're water to mm. begin with, but that's, that's not why the water's there. The water's there to reflect and so that you can see yourself. But not just that, you, the, the water is responsive to your energy that you're giving out. So if you are turbulent, if you are 
operating in negative frequencies, that water is moving and there is no way that you can see a clear picture from that. But if you are calm and still and you respond to life's happenings instead of react, the waters will be still and calm and you can see things clearly and not just in seeing yourself but in seeing others in what you deserve, in what you want, your purpose. So yeah, water is in the box. Cool, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> no, was I. <laughs> Amazing, so I guess like that gift is like clarity that mm. we give ourselves and we can see ourselves and others and reflect. Yeah, I mean, if mm. you have clarity, you know, you know what is for you and what is not and you know that you don't need to know everything, so mm. you just, live instead of resisting and, and mm. pushing against life you go with life yeah mm. love it okay now i think we've got almost all the questions here um there's a few more i want to know about your practices and things that you do mm -hmm. keep yourself in check in tune mm -hmm. and light <laughs> <laughs> i sit in the bath for four hours really yeah four hours like the timer on like exactly four hours uh, not quite. Like I sometimes will refill it with hot water. Yeah. Mm. Um, books, reading. I I don't want to use the word escape, but I escape to other worlds. Um, fantasy. You travel. You're an escape. Yeah, I travel. Thank you. I I travel through other people's stories, and I'm not attached to it. Mm. So I, but I become them in the story and. I'm there just on this journey. I've, I've always been an avid reader. What are you reading at the moment? Um, I just finished a book and what's the next one called? It's gone out of my head. Is it fiction, non-fiction? It's fiction. Or fiction. Or okay, fiction. fiction yeah. yeah. So I loved non-fiction in school and then mm. came out of school and I was like, right, I should read self-help books and da 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 da, you know? And it's the whole I should story. Don't subscribe to that. People shooting on themselves. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I stopped reading. And I was wow. like, I loved reading. Why am I not making time for it? And it's because I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And then there was one day I took myself out on a date. I was Where'd in... Where'd you go? <laughs> oh, where did I go? Not Leaderville, Mount Lawley. Mm. So I went and got sushi. And then I was strolling around and I was like, nice. ooh, bookstore. So I go in the bookstore and I almost had this like resistance mm. to ask the lady. Um, but I was like, no, we push beyond resistance. So I was like, we, 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 because you I, your spiritual team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me and the guy in the, uh, the what is it? The military officer. The military, yeah. yeah. I want a romance book. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, where do I go? <laughs> Tell me what to do. <laughs> tell me where, yeah, yeah, tell me the answers. So yeah, I, I, I got a romance book and mm. went home that evening. I think I probably did have a bath and I started reading mm. it. And then next thing it was just, I couldn't put this book down. And I didn't, I stopped feeling guilty for it because we've been mm. told, you know, oh, romantic, smushy, all that stuff. Like, yeah. and I'm like, no. Who's told you that? Oh, where no did, told where me that. did I hear it? <laughs> and why did I let it cement in? I don't mm. know. I don't know. But I heard it. Yeah. Somewhere. And that see, that's the thing is the conditioning that's out there. We don't even mm. realise. Could the, be a movie. Could be a movie. Just as a kid. It yeah. could have been two people talking yeah. next to me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that story's crazy. Like, whoa, yeah, that makes sense. Mm, you know? Mm, mm. Fair enough, yeah. Subliminal messages. Subliminal. Mm. Mm. And your inner child workshop. How do people work with their inner child and why is it so important? I mean, my whole life is an inner child workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's life is. Mm. Um, that, that is you. Mm. And I think they say up until you're seven years old, those are the most pivotal and important years of your foundations. Mm. Whether you realize that you have trust
you have people to lean on, um, you learn how to communicate, you learn how to be in relationships with others, you mm. learn how to be yourself. From you one learn, to seven. Yeah, from I think it's from one to seven. Don't mm. quote me on it. Um, and we're all in this massive process of unlearning mm. because of what our parents were taught and yeah. what they were taught. And it's it's this generational trauma from the patriarchy and the system that is built mm. to enslave us. True. And I mean, you look at that passing comment that I got and I'm like, oh, well, I, I shouldn't read romantic books, mm. you know. Why? Why? I should do whatever I want to do as long yeah. as it's from a place of love. Mm. And I shouldn't feel guilty or ashamed or any of these things. And that's another thing. Shame is massive mm. within people. I mean, humans, beings. Oh, see? <laughs> um, and, and shame is rooted in that sacral chakra. And mm. what sells? Sex sells. So mm. they are constantly keeping us in a sick state of being feeling ashamed about ourselves and perpetuating a specific ideal that we have to chase so that we keep consuming and we don't realize that we don't need to consume externally we just need to love ourselves mm. at the root of it and in loving yourself is accepting all the things that have happened to you mm. because you can't take away what's happened and leading with compassion going forward mm. and if you need to talk to that child talk to that child let them know that it's okay and it's safe and you've got them now and rewrite the story you can always rewrite the story mm. you don't have to stay conditioned and you don't have to be stuck in on that merry-go-round of mm. the same thing occurring to you because time is not this linear thing and if you choose to keep living in what has happened to you it's not happened it's happening true so if i decide to still remain in the mental state of i have this abusive parent in my life then i would still be in that state there and then mm. and i would still be living and my body would still be responding and my nervous system and i i wouldn't have that clarity to see so mm. what, once we sit back and we realize I am not everything that has happened to me I am how I respond to the world that is happening to me well wow. that's how we shift it mm, beautiful I love it when you get going <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I'm a Greek woman I talk with my hands and I just keep going and going that is beautiful like, I really like that you get in such a flow state and such amazing stuff comes out um, so you're into romance, <coughs> romance novels, things like that. I am into love, yes. I'm going to change these batteries quickly and then All I'm right. going to ask this question. Yeah, quick recess. You got the backup. You need the bathroom or anything like that or you're good? No, I'm good. Perfect. I could go all night. <laughs> <laughs> We can edit this out, which I like. And now, okay, so, starting from now, <laughs> where um, you're into romantic novels and you do a lot of reading, you love romance, you love love. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to write a message or send a message to your future partner, Ooh. a serious one, life partner, like the sort the of one. one, yeah, um, if you're going to send them a message, what would, you, what, what would you send them, what would you say in this message? This beam it to the future. Everything that I'm about to say is not just directed at that partner, but it is also reflected back at me mm. because a partnership is two beings coming together. Mm. Um, it's that, that foundation of respect for one another and building upon a, a friendship because at the end of the day, Everything else can slip away, but if you can be friends and you have that respect for one another, mm. you will always have common ground to come back on and to heal and to communicate. And I mean, your, 
your first external relationships that you have beyond your family is friends. And that's, that's where we base all other relationships upon and so many people jump head on right into relationships without getting to know that, that being, without you know, learning their quirks and laughing together. And, you know, we, we get into relationships and we're so serious, like, oh, I'm not going to fart around you, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want them to think that, you know, I'm mm. not pretty. And it's like, well, they should see you're ugly. Mm. They should see it before you get to that stage. Because once you see someone in their full expression and you love and respect them anyway, then everything else is just ease. Mm. Um, so may there be ease and love and respect and communication um, overstanding because we don't stand under one mm. another um, patience fun to not forget to have mm. fun it doesn't doesn't have to be serious and I mean I almost see some some partnerships and relationships as this business kind of you know you do the dishes I'll do this da, 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 like and mm. then we'll sit down and we'll watch a movie and then we'll schedule and have pleasure time and <laughs> da, 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 and I'm like <laughs> pleasure time <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like they run by these yeah. schedules and I'm like where's where's the joy mm. you know so show show up as you are yeah. Love yourself as you are, because if you can't love yourself, you can't love me. Mm. And if I can't love myself, I can't love you. Yeah. And always come back mm. to love in every choice, every decision. Even if that decision is to leave, let it be from a place of love. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Um, that was amazing, actually. I loved how you told that story because <laughs> I feel like as human beings or as beings today, <laughs> we rush things yeah. where we go into dating straight away in a relationship and it's like, whoa, we just, you just left behind all these, like, so much Pivotal fun and connection things. and intimacy that you can have just with a friend. Oh, intimacy and that, is building the that foundation. biggest thing. And mm. we, we are a collective of beings who are starved of intimacy mm. and not just in... A, a life partner in our friendships, in our family, like, mm. you know, touch, laughter, um, compliments, mm. being open, being open to love. Yeah. We're all so closed off from intimate connections and like this conversation is really intimate and it's beautiful mm. and <laughs> expansive. Yeah. And there's so many people who would be closed off to that. Mm. So intimacy is is above all being intimate in in everything being intimate in expressing yourself being intimate in wanting to know more about mm. your partner doing everything intimately because that intimacy is like vroom, presence mm. like i'm here i'm listening tell me mm. i'm witnessing you i see you and i love you and that mm. is intimacy and it, it doesn't have to be you know having that connection in the bedroom, mm. it's being connected mm. through all things. In every and moment. choosing, yeah. Mm. Like I, I'm choosing to connect with you. It's not, you know, oh, I love you. Like I love you because I love, no, I am I love choosing. you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, see you later. <laughs> this is too intimate. <laughs> yeah. But not people, people say they love you. It's almost like when they're leaving or departing or, you know? Yeah. You know? So I've noticed that, like, yeah. Yeah. Get, get smooshy and romantic in the middle of hanging out with friends and your partner and, you know, mm. be out in public and you're at dinner or the movies or you're playing mini golf with a group of friends and you're like, man, I love you, man. And just mm. randomly compliment them. If you look at them and you think... Mm. Dad, like your eyes are so incredible. Just say it. You know, anytime a compliment comes to your mind, yeah. say it. Anytime someone pops into your head, message them. I was just thinking about you. I hope you're okay. I've seen you're doing this. I'm really proud of you. Give and just give from such a place of love and 
I can't tell you mm. how much the universe will reciprocate that for you. Mm. That that's something Amazing. you want to manifest. That's actually beautiful. I didn't realize like what you're just saying is what's been happening for me over the last like this last six months. Mm -hmm. Getting involved in this community who are like-minded, who are on that same path as I am, and just seeing the love and connection you have with these people. It's like whoa, what have I been doing my whole life? In yeah, my, my I, th I thought I had these deep friendships in high school, and then mm. you know life happens and we people shift apart and then so many doors close but my goodness gracious me was everything else expanded mm. beyond that point and i look back and i go that that was surface level i have never experienced depths like i have experienced and that's just the surface wow yeah mm. all right so <laughs> one more, I'm checking the batteries, that's why yeah. I keep looking there. Um, <laughs> one more experiment I just thought of during, during this time, because I noticed you've got very strong elemental energy and a connection to Mother Earth, Gaia. Mm -hmm. We're going to do one more channeling session where we're going to channel Mother Earth and see what she has to say. Ooh. You ready? Ooh. Now, do okay. you want to go to the forest or to the ocean? Forest. Okay. I've been going to the ocean for 11 days, well, not the ocean, but water for 11 days straight. Have you? Yeah, I've been doing a cold mm. submersion challenge. Oh, okay. Not challenge, immersion. Mm, mm, uh, well, I think we have to go to the ocean then. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. We'll go, <laughs> Let's to, go the to the ocean. ocean. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to give the option. I'm going to go to the ocean. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> okay, here we go. Taking a nice deep breath, bringing ourselves back to home. And we're going to step in to the depths of the ocean, surrounded by whales and dolphins. And we're going to feel this water, which isn't too cold, it's perfect. And it's charged, it's electric, it's alive. And we're going to connect into Mother Earth, Erna. She connects to her heart and we feel her radiating through our being. We hear her voice. We feel her soul as she reaches out to us always. And she sends us a message to the people of Earth, the beings of, of Earth, about the reality of the situation and how we can better serve her and ourselves and humanity. We need to let go of instant gratification. There's no one size fits all. There's no correct answer. It's slow, impactful, micro decisions that will lead to each one of us bettering our lives. And in turn, when we better our lives, we better those of those around us. It's like you're about to embark on this massive journey. And you're looking at the final destination and you're shaking your head. How, how am I going to reach that? There's no way that I could walk through that desert barefoot with only one litre of water and traverse the seas and climb that mountain with barely anything to hold on to. But we forget that the human soul has this perseverance like no other. And despite everything that we have done to our bodies, the, the damage, the food, the abuse, we always have the ability to bounce back. And just like the body, Mother Earth is the exact same. If anything, she has a greater capacity to bounce back and it's not going to be in these great massive feats. It's in the micro decisions that we each make. Because when we better ourselves, we become better. We make better decisions. And in turn, 
if we stop hurting ourselves, we stop hurting Mother Gaia because we, we realize that we are one of the same. So just as you would not treat your mother ill, you wouldn't want to treat the planet ill either. And we, we can't leap, you know, we can't leap these, these massive mountains or jump over the ocean, but we can take baby steps and we can have those little strides and eventually we will get to the end. But along the way, we will slowly clear up the mess that we've all collectively made bit by bit. And within that journey, we will realize what's important. So it's not even the coming to the other end of healing and fixing and, and coming home to yourself and what's important. It's the steps along the way, the, the beings that you'll meet, the experiences that you'll have, the realizations, like when the penny drops on certain things, that is just, that is the best feeling because you're sitting there going, damn, yes, okay, that makes it, that feels good, that feels good, that's just landed. So take micro steps, intentional decisions to make your life better. That's it. Beautiful. Mm. I love that. I had a message come through as well. Mm. Don't mind to share it with Do you Do tell. Yeah. So what came through was like the fish in the ocean surrounded mm. by water, as you are surrounded by love. Mm-hmm always accessible for you to tune into and to hold on to and to give and to receive. To deepen your hearts like the depth of the ocean, to love one another and to surrender into it. You each must reap what you have sown. Mm -hmm. But we shall move forward together. I love you, I love you, I love you. I felt that right here Did when you know? said that, yeah. Mm. I felt it like here and here, and I'm like, whoa, like Mother Earth is very easy to connect into. Very easy, she's always mm. there. Yeah, just all around us. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> yeah. All right, so pick a card, level three. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish off with these questions. For each of us? Yeah, okay. why not? You want to go first or me go first? You go first. Okay. If you could prescribe me one thing to do for the rest of this month, what would it be and why? Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> what do you fear most right now? Oh, God. The first thing that came to my mind, without me even thinking, was intimacy. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. So for the next 30 days, I want you to lean into intimacy, whether it's a journal prompt one day and getting mm. intimate with yourself, whether it is leaning into a conversation with a stranger mm. and seeing if you can make it intimate Okay. <laughs> um, every, every interaction, so at, at one point in the day, mm. find space for intimacy, whether it's with yourself, someone you know, a stranger, mm. Mother Earth, you can find intimacy with anything. You can even find intimacy in fasting mm. and actually truly connecting to the vibration of what is in this juice. Mm. and. What do you bring? Are you going to cleanse my blood? And yeah. why do I feel drawn to cleanse my blood? And really getting intimate with mm. everything that you're doing. Yeah. And, and that is Tantra or what is out there. But, but Tantra is getting intimate with every single aspect of your life. Wow. I love that. Mm. Beautiful. 
And I'm excited to hear about it. Okay, amazing. <laughs> That's it. That's the end. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>